Hello, hopefully you've seen the first video in the Getting Started with O&M Profiler series. In that video we ran through some of the basics of the system and this time round we're going to complete our very first pension switching case. Now we're not going to cover every detail, every possible option of a pension switch, but what we'll do is we'll cover the most common scenario and we'll also talk about some of the extra options that you've got and we'll come back in a later video and cover some of those in detail. Okay, so first things first, if we're going to do a new pension switch we need to dive into the new switching quote button. So the first thing you'll notice is there's some information that we need to fill in. We've got the pop-up text, the toast down the bottom here, telling us we need to enter the client details. We've got the red boxes around the fields we need to complete, and we've got the exclamation marks explaining what we need to do. So as it's our first client, let's set about filling in this information. And you'll see the boxes change color as I go. There we go. Now, service basis we set up in the introduction video, so you can have a different service basis for different clients, and obviously the advisor charging is then linked to that. So I'm going to leave it on the default, but that's how you would set the level of service basis for this client. So you'll see now that our warning text is gone, our exclamation mark's gone, and all the red boxes have been filled in. We've filled in all the information on the right, so now we're going to work our way down the left to the next important section, which is the current plans. Okay, and again, we've got the message telling us what we need to do. There's nothing in here yet because we haven't done it, and we need to add in current plan. Obviously, they're switching from something, so we need to tell the system what the something is. Let's give it a meaningful name. And then tell it which provider it is. You'll have a guess. Happy life. Because O&M Profiler can do much more than just pension switching, this is the stage where you tell it what they've got at the minute. So if you want to do the drawdown switch, you click drawdown, bonds, ISAs, all the rest of it. We're going to do a pension switch for the purpose of this demo. Okay. And then you'll see some extra fields have come to life here. Some extra exclamation marks for the bits that we must fill in. Uh, so let's do that. So current value. Obviously, you're going to have a benefit statement in front of you with this information on there. I don't, but I'm going to use uh, the default case that I've got. Um, you'll see in here that we've got inflation adjusted rates supplied. Now, 99 times out of 100, that's what you're going to have. Um, you'll know their inflation adjusted rates because the growth rates will talk at low about either reducing or it'll be a negative number. If for whatever reason you have nominal rates, uh, 2, 5, and 8, that sort of range, then you can change it to monetary rates supplied here. Or if you're waiting for a statement to come through and you don't have the actual statement from the provider, uh, you can pick estimated by system and that'll prompt you for a single charge. So if you know roughly what the charges are, you can get an idea. Probably your compliance department won't go for this, um, but it's a good way of seeing how the land lies before the information comes in, seeing you know if it's worth pursuing. Uh, so let's leave it on inflation adjusted rates. And for most cases, when you're doing a pension switch, you're going to do retirement age. You do have the option for specific term, but that's more really for things like ISA transfers and stuff like that. So let's leave it on to retirement age, and we'll set our retirement age to 65. Okay. Okay. And you can see now that our exclamation mark is gone. That's it. That's all the information you need to supply for the current plan in order to complete a switch in case. Um, there are still three sections left, so I'm going to go through those, but if you wanted to, you could skip straight on now to the new investment. So the system's made an assumption on the growth rates. We've assumed that you've got the industry standard rates, and you'll see we've, what we've done is we've put the nominal rates alongside the inflation adjusted, so you can see what they relate to. So you'll see these numbers here. They're potentially different on the statement you've got. Lots of the providers do it in different ways. Um, these are the actual mathematical numbers that come out. Um, but what they sometimes do is round those to make it easier to understand for the client. Um, so what you might see is minus a half, 2.4, 5.4, 2.5, whatever it might be. They're all worked out the same the same way. They're all worked out with 2, 5, and 8, and then inflation adjusted afterwards. Um, so more often than not, your quote is going to be an industry standard. But if it isn't, that's handled. So if you've got reduced growth rates, you can go in and enter the specific rates for the funds. Uh, it might be they've given you minus one at the low rate, for example. And again, it'll calculate the nominal value and show you what that is. If you've got multiple funds with different growth rates, you can use our calculator. Click on that. And you just tell it how many funds there are. It'll fill in the rows for them. And you're simply typing in the amount invested and the growth rate. I'm not going to fill this in for this case. I'm going to keep it nice and simple, but just so you know that that's there. There's lots of different 
permutations for current plans. One of the real skills you'll develop when doing pension switching is learning to translate what the existing provider has given you. They all write it out differently. They all have a slightly different style. Um, if you get a case that you're not familiar with, you've got the help option at the top, which is context aware. So because I'm in current plans, it'll tell me lots of different options about current plans. And there's also videos to show that as well. Let's just put that back to industry standard for now. And let's move to the next session. So ongoing contributions, I'm not going to assume any for this, but if you if they're still paying money in, you enter that here, you get the option to add put values and things as well. Holdings. So we already know the supplied maturity values, so we're not going to use the holdings to calculate anything. This is purely for past performance information. Uh, but obviously this past performance information is very useful. So if you know the funds, you are better off adding them in. There's two ways of doing it. You can go out into the full-blown fund research section uh, and, and look for the funds. But if you know the ISINs or the names, the easiest way is to pick from a shortlist. Now, this is pre-populated with all the Abbey funds because I told it in the basic details section that it was an Abbey plan. So it's already done that search for me. So I can just pick that one and add fund. If the fund you want isn't in the pre-populated list, that's not a problem. You can simply type in here the ISIN number, the name, and it will go away and do a search and add that into the list. Okay, so let's stick with the one we've added and we come back. So it's in the list now, but it's not got any units or value assigned to it. So we just need to click on the edit icon. You can do it in monetary terms, in percentage terms, or if you know the units and you prefer to do that, you can cancel out of this one and enter the units directly. It was 150,000, so I'm just going to put that in. There you go, and you see it's worked out the number of units based on the price, based on the as at date that we told it we had this quote. Right, then I could add in second plans. If you've got more than one, you simply add them in, up to nine, you keep adding them in, keep entering the details, exactly the same premise. The only requirement is the retirement age must be the same. Uh, we need a consistent retirement age in order to do a consolidated switch, but that's, that's the only thing. What we're going to do is we're going to keep this video to a single plan, but later on in the series, we're going to come back and revisit my first consolidated switch, and we'll go into a little bit more detail about some of the other options at that stage. Okay, so that's everything for current plans. Back to the left-hand side, new investment. So there's three different ways of picking where you're going to invest in the new plan. Uh, you can do it through specific funds. So if you know the set of funds you're going to use, you can simply add them in. You've got the picker and you've got the research section again. If perhaps you're just looking to do a market comparison, you don't know exactly who you're going to invest with, um, which funds you're going to pick, you can use the sector defaults mode. What that does is based on the using rule down the bottom, it will pick the most appropriate fund for each product. So it's important to realize that it's not necessarily the same fund for every product. So let me show you. If I pick 100% by double clicking or you can type just click and type uh, mixed investment 40 to 85 and the using rule we've got by default using the lowest annual fund charge including funds in the equivalent IMA sectors so what that means is for every product it's going to pick the cheapest fund they've got available and it's going to look in oics and unit trusts and things as well there's different rules you can say don't look in oics and unit trusts you can say must have five year past performance you can say instead of finding me the cheapest find me the largest the default is that one simply because it gives you the most results what you can do once you're here, once you've filled something in, you can save that as your default. Uh, if you're going to pick different each time, then don't worry about it. But if you are, you can save that as your default. The last method of picking funds is centralized investment propositions. These is where your model portfolios live. Now, you'll either have model portfolios that have been system supplied, perhaps if you're part of a network or if you've asked us to add some in, uh, or you'll have created model portfolios yourself. And that's outside the scope of this video. We're going to cover that later on. But when you've done that, you'd come in here, simply put a tick in the box. And that's, that's it for you. You're going to use that model portfolio across the products to support it. We're going to keep it simple for this video today, and we're going to do sector mode. So I'll leave it at that and move on to results. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is it's more than just a set of results. You've got the additional information down the bottom, which is giving you a visual representation of what you're seeing. Um, obviously, you've got the results list, but if I click on a different product, You'll see the additional information redraws, showing info about that particular product. And you can see in the middle of the list here, we've got our existing plan. So you've got some new products that are cheaper, some which are more expensive, and there might be other reasons for using those. So having picked your product, what you can do is you can say, actually, I want to look a little bit closer at the one I'm going to do. Let's click on Quick Compare. And what that does is it gets rid of all the other products apart from the one you selected and the existing provider. And that extra screen space has now been put aside to the additional information. You can see there's lots more info in there. 
And what you can also do with the additional information is let's say you want to look a little bit deeper at the acceptable growth rate matrix. Perhaps you're part of a network that uses that. You can change the additional information dashboard to one more specific to what you're looking at. And it'll just go a little bit deeper into the options that you've got for that. So let's change that back to the default one, the pension switching. And let's turn quick compare off and get back to the full list. So one of the key things you're going to want to do probably every time you run a switching case is produce the switching report. So you've got reports here. The switching report is specific to the highlighted row. So you'll need to pick the product that you want to produce the switching report for. If you want the full results list, there's simply a report called results. Now there's two different types of reports that we do. We do client facing reports, ones that we think you could quite happily give to your client that comes with extra explanation, uh, an introduction page, some reasons why you might want to switch and all the rest of it. Uh, and other reports that are perhaps more for putting on file. And the results is one of those. It's a list of all the results. It shows, shows your working basically, but it comes without any commentary. So I'll, I'll show you both styles of reports. So we go for the switching report first. Okay, and here's our pension switching report. So you'll see straight away it's got a cover page. It tells you who the client is and bits and bobs. It gives you an explanation down here in the bar about what the purpose of the report is. Depending on which browser you're using, save and print will be slightly different. It basically creates a PDF. So in Edge, the default browser on Windows 10, you've got the print and save icons up there. It's slightly different in Chrome and in IE 11, whatever it might be. Um, but hopefully if you're familiar to that particular browser, you'll be familiar with how PDF printing and saving works in there. Um, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. I'll do it so we put a page on. Okay, so we're going to flick through the switching report. Uh, I'm not going to talk in depth about very much of it. We'll focus on some of the key numbers. But obviously, if you've got any questions about the report, just speak to our support team and they'll be happy to help. So we've got the introduction. We've got some details on the current plan, asset mix. We've got the new plan in there, which shows the charging structure and where we're investing. Uh, we've got the same asset mix for the new plan. And then we've got the comparison results. And this is the first page that, uh, that I'm going to spend a little bit of time on. So you'll see in here, we've got the growth rates that the existing provider gave us and their maturity values. So what the system's done is it's worked out what the equivalent charge would be to get you from the 150,000 at the start, growing at these growth rates to the maturity values that the existing provider gave us. So you can see for the existing plan, it's around one, 1.1%. Now it doesn't mean that the existing plan had a single charge of 1%. There may have been monetary charges in there. There may have been tiering. We don't know the charging structure of the existing plan, but we don't really need to. What we've done is we've simply calculated it based on the start point and the end point to give you an idea of approximately how expensive that plan is. Compare that with the new plan. So we show the effect of the new charging structure and the new investment, and then we say how much it will grow your pot by that switch. We've next got the critical yields. These show you what growth rate would give you the same value as the existing plan. And then the difference between those is the annual safety margin, or if it's a case where it's a little bit more expensive to do the switch, it would be the additional growth required. So it's quite an important page. That's the one with all the nitty gritty that goes into the detail. Let's continue on through the report. We've got some direct comparisons between the two. We've got the past performance page that comes in because we entered the existing plan details and the new plan details. And then we've got some pros and cons, some advantages and disadvantages of investing in pensions in general and switching. And then we've got the new business illustration. If the new provider uses reduced growth rates, for example, we would show you here. Basically, this page is designed to, to marry up a new illustration you'll get from the provider with what's in the quote. Because we've done a like for like comparison between the old and the new, it might not be exactly the same as what you get from the new provider. So that page is just there to bridge that gap. And then finally, we've got details of notes and assumptions that we've made in the report. Okay, so let's head back to our switch. So the other type of report we've got is more for the file. Let's have a look at one of those, the results report. Straight away, you can see we've done away with the commentary. It's got the raw information, it's got the client details, and it's got the big long list of all the products with their results. It's got the different tables. So AGR and ASM, overall percentage, things like that. So it's, it's as I say, not designed to go necessary to the client, but you might put it as an appendix or you might just have it on file to make sure you've got the, the audit trail of what you did. Uh, we touched on advisor charging and how you would set it as a default. What you might want to do though for a specific case is you might want to change that. So if we go into actions and advisor charges, you can, as you see here, override the client's service basis for this quote. So let's say I've done a little bit more work for this client and I'm going to actually charge 1.5%. 
to automatically tick the override because it knows we've changed it. I can also change the ongoing if I want, but I'm going to leave that as it is and click OK. And the system's recalculated using that new advisor charge. The other thing that's worth drawing your attention to is product sourcing. If you want to look at only specific products or products that have specific features, then this is how you do it. Product sourcing and filters. And you can pick certain criteria that the products must support. And you'll see it gives you a count of how many offer that facility. Now, perhaps this is the criteria you're going to use every time when you do a switching case, or you're going to use it quite often. You can save it, give it a name, drawdown supported. And as I say, you can either make it a default or you can just save it. If I make it the default, then every switching case I do going forwards is going to start from this position. It doesn't mean I can't change it. I can come in and do exactly the same, but the default is going to be whatever you've set it to. So I'm not going to do that for now, but that's how you would do it. If I click OK, and we've now got our reduced set. OK. One other thing to mention, uh, you might notice that there's a switching report pack as well as a switching report. There's also a switching report with investment comparisons. Let me just quickly explain what the difference between those three is. So the switching report is the one you're going to do most of the time probably, but what we've done for convenience is we've added in a switching report plus investment comparison. So that's going to do a portfolio versus portfolio comparison and it's going to append it to the end of the PDF so you don't need to print off two different reports. Um, the switching report pack is more for when you've got multiple plans what that'll do is that'll do the switching report for the consolidated it'll then repeat the process for each of the individual plans so you can compare them on their own merits as well without you having to go into each and print them off so we'll cover that in a little bit more detail when we do our consolidated switch but one of the questions we get asked is, is what's the difference between them so it's worth covering that at this stage okay that's everything i'm going to cover for this video uh, in the next video we're going to look at accumulation and decumulation i hope you'll join us for that but for now thanks for watching